Hello and welcome to Tradecraft Security Weekly, episode number five. I'm your host, Bo Bullock, and in this week's episode, I'm going to be talking about password spraying Windows Active Directory accounts. Now, that's not to be confused with performing brute force attempts against a single account, which a lot of attackers do. It's a very common thing for an attacker to take one, one user account and try thousands and thousands of passwords against them. Um, but this is going to be slightly different and, in my experience, far more effective at gaining access to credentials on a network. Uh, so I, I will explain the difference between both of those in just a moment. But first, let's talk about why an attacker would want to do this first off. Uh, why, why, besides the obvious reasons of it being a bad thing for an attacker to gain access to an account, what does it actually benefit them um, other than, you know, if they were to get access to, like, let's say a domain admin? Well, a lot of times, various users have various levels of privileges on a network. Um, let's say that you have a marketing user who is, you know, an admin of a server for some reason, right? Like they have admin to their marketing server. Um, if I get access to their credential, I can now be an admin of that server. Um, that'd be a bad day. Uh, let's say you have a SQL server um, that, you know, you have a DBA group that is an admin of the SQL server group or the SQL server. And if I get, you know, password spray a user in the DBA group, I'm now admin of that SQL server. Um, so the, the point is that with gaining access to more credentials and more accounts, we can now find other places on the network where we have more privilege, right? So like if I have a very basic user to start out with, I might not be able to access certain places on the network. But now that I'm gaining access to more credentials, I can start looking around and finding various places that I'm admin of. Um, and then, you know, additionally, uh, you know, we start using tools like Bloodhound, which I'm gonna definitely detail in depth in another episode of Tradecraft Security Weekly, um, which allows us to find those paths to, um, to, uh, to, to escalate to various places a lot more quickly. Um, so, uh, you know, using Bloodhound, like it, it will basically go, you know, go out to every every system on the network, say, hey, who's an admin of you? Who's logged in? Um, it'll check all the different groups um, and then the different, um, uh, uh, you know, ways that you could potentially move from an account that you have access to to another place on the network. So the common the common example of using Bloodhound is to use it to just escalate to a domain admin. Um, but the point is that having access to more credentials makes it far more likely that we're going to find a path. Um, and that's one of the reasons that I really like password spraying a lot. So what's the primary barrier when it comes to password spraying? The main thing is account lockout policies, right? Because if, if I started to try to brute force an account, let's say that I just did a standard brute force attempt against any user account on your network, I'm probably going to lock them out pretty quick because most organizations have a typical account lockout policy. Something like, let's say, five attempts in 30 minutes, right? That's a very standard policy. Um, if I do five failed login attempts in, 30, in a 30-minute window, it's probably going to lock out some accounts. Um, password spraying has the ability to kind of get around that um, by taking kind of an opposite approach to what brute forcing does. So instead of me trying a thousand passwords against one user account, I'm now going to take every single user account on your network. I'm going to go grab the entire list of all the usernames and I'm going to try one or maybe two passwords against that, that full list in that 30 minute window. And then, you know, after that 30 minute window resets, we can do it again and then we can do it again. And that is, in my experience, has been extremely successful. So, you know, what are some passwords we use to do this when we do sprays? Um, very common, very common thing to find is season year. Um, I guarantee you, if you go try password spraying in your environment right now, and you try season year or month year, you know, something like um, spring 2017 with a capital first letter, which fits most password policies for most domains, um, you're probably going to find that you have users in your environment using a password like spring 2017. Um, you know, another one, password one, two, three, company name one, two, three, like you get the point. Like we tried things that are common um, and that typically will fit into that password policy for a domain. The, the thing about the season year thing that makes it extremely common is that that typically falls in line with that 90 day password reset policy as well. That's by default in most domains. Um, so, you know, like you, you, you know, when it gets to winter time, we're going to change it to winter 2017 and then, um, you know, maybe spring 2018 next year, that kind of thing. Um, so definitely check it out. Um, there's a few tools out there that can do this. Um, one uh, uh, that I wrote, it's a PowerShell script called Domain Password Spray. Um, makes it, I, I think, fairly easy because I, I go and grab the user list from the domain. I am able to remove potentially disabled accounts, remove uh, uh, accounts that are potentially about to be locked out as well um, from the list so that we're not going to you know, potentially lock out accounts when we do this. And I only try one attempt at a time. Um, you can also add in a password list if you wanted to that will automatically look at that password observation window and then try it every, you know, at the end of that observation window. 
Um, another tool uh, that I, I like to use, and this specifically is uh, uh, one that I use when I'm not actually on a domain. Like let's say I'm on, I'm a use, I'm a user, I'm a, I'm an attacker that has a box connected to a network, but not necessarily on the same domain. Um, SMB login from Metasploit, which I'm going to demo both of those in just a moment. Um, one thing I got to preface real quick before anybody tries this stuff is be extremely careful not to lock out accounts. Even though you might run, let's say, net accounts forward slash domain from a command prompt and see that the account lockout policy is, let's say, five attempts in 30 minutes, um, you have to worry about other account policies as well that are not specifically uh, designated to your account. Um, so there's, you know, fine green password policies a lot of times for, like, let's say, service accounts or whatever um, that might have a different window, might have a different number of lockout attempts. Um, and that could be a bad day if you start locking out some of those accounts. All right, let's go on to our password spring demo. Okay, so I've got my Windows box here. This specific first example is going to be um, the Windows box that is on the domain, right? So this is on uh, the Empire domain. And, you know, when we have PowerShell, um, we can easily talk to the domain. So let me go grab my PowerShell script, which I have on the desktop here. So I'm going to start up by running, um, I'm going to start by running PowerShell.exe-exec bypass. I'm going to import the domain password spray module, which is out on GitHub. Um, now, this is fairly easy. So uh, to, to, to run domain password spray, all you literally have to do is run invoke domain password spray dash password and give it the password you want to run. And what it will do is it will go talk to the domain. It'll try to find the fine green password policies. It'll try to remove um, any of the, the users that might potentially be locked out, um, remove disabled users from the list. And then it goes, it goes ahead and generates that user list for you. Um, so you can see here, it, it actually went ahead and generated a list of 36 users from this current domain. Um, and then it asks you, are you sure you want to perform a spray? So you say yes, and it's done already. So um, you can see we have three successful password sprays uh, on the Empire domain. Fairly straightforward. Um, another thing that you can do, um, if you wanted to just like uh, generate the user list alone, you can do git dash domain user list. Um, and just running that will grab all the users from the domain and put it in a nice list for you. Um, you could pipe that out to a file if you wanted. Um, you could give it dash remove disabled or dash remove potential lockouts to remove those, uh, those other accounts that I mentioned before that you might want to remove prior to running a password spray. Um, so the other example I want to show is the SMB login example from Metasploit. So, you know, occasionally you have, um, you know, let's say you're connected to a network, but you're not on the domain. Um, let's say you have like a Linux box connected to the network and you want to do a password spray. I, I personally like using SMB login um, to do it uh, when I'm not connected to a domain. Uh, so what you, what you need to do is you first need to use auxiliary scanner SMB slash SMB login. And we need to set our, our hosts to, to, once, to this is going to be um, the IP of my DC that I know of. And you know, one of the things when you do this, you do have to be able to gather a user list somehow um, to, to perform the spray with. And in a lot of cases, what you can do is you can find where like a DC has like a null session enabled, um, and you might be able to connect to it over you know like RPC client or something to to enumerate the users. There's a few tools out there to do that as well. Um, so let's see. So we've got SMB login. Um, let's go ahead and give it the SMB domain. And the SMB pass. We're gonna give it. Um, oop, let's just give it Spring 2017, not Spring <laughs> Space 2017. Spring 2017. And then um, lastly, we gotta give it our user file. All right. And now uh, we should be good to go. Um, let's go ahead and run that, and you will see it. Go through each of the accounts, uh, just like the other one. It tries to log into each one individually. Um, you can see we got some success there. We got success there. Um, but again, like this is this is a good method for doing it if you're not specifically on a domain. All right. Well, that is it for this episode of Tradecraft Security Weekly. Um, you know, for the blue team, alert on password spraying attempts. Um, you know, when it comes to uh, when it comes to me doing uh, like login attempts with thousands and thousands of failed login attempts from a single IP on your network, it's probably something you should alert on. 
Um, you know, there's no reason that a single system should be trying to authenticate to, you know, all the user accounts in your domain. So if you see that happening, alert on it. Um, you, you know, perform some internal password sprays using these tools to weed out some of the poor passwords. Like if you go do this on your network and you find, you know, people are using poor passwords, you know, try to communicate to them that it's important that they choose strong passwords so that, um, you know, somebody can't just get access to their account fairly easily. And then additionally, increase password policies uh, to pre prevent weak passwords. First off, you know, uh, in most of the cases where um, password policies typically end up in being increased in, in, in length, uh, we have much less success in uh, being su successful in password spraying. And, uh, you know, you find me on Twitter. I'm at DAFTAC, and I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks.